Yo, what is up guys? It's Eric in the Surf NJ. And I just want to take a moment to show you my favorite fluke rig. And this is the fluke rig that I've been using probably for the last four years and have had a lot of success in doing so. And I promise you, if you watch this video, it is the easiest, most foolproof, idiot proof way to catch fluke from the surf. I'm gonna show you how to tie it, I'm gonna show you how to dress it, and then I'm gonna show you the reason why it's so successful. So the first thing you wanna do is get yourself some fluoro, all right, get the 30 pound, and I know 30 pounds sounds real heavy for surf, for surf fishing, especially for fluke, but I'm gonna show you why in a second. So everybody knows how to make a dropper loop at this point, right? If you don't know how to make a dropper loop, check out some videos here on YouTube. There's plenty of videos to show you how to do it. But I kind of do it with a little bit of a twist, literally. So I'm gonna go up about, I would say 16 inches from the bottom of the line. And then I'm gonna start to twist the line. And I'm just gonna start to work it until it makes this little pigtail just like this. I'm watching the pole in the background. But you're gonna twist, you're gonna keep twisting, keep twisting, kind of like a phone cord. For those of you old enough to remember what a phone cord looks like. You're gonna keep twisting and then every once in a while you just pull up and you kind of choke up on the twist. And then you keep twisting, just keep twisting, just keep twisting. And pull up choke up a little bit keep twisting and you want this twist really tight so you almost get about I would say five inches worth of twist just like this and then you go ahead and you make your standard setup for a dropper loop take the bottom twist it over again if you don't know how to make a dropper loop Plenty of YouTube videos how to do it. Check it out. And then you take this end, put it through that end. Cinch it down a little bit. A little bit of saliva. And there you go. And we're going to go over uh, double overhand loop for the bottom of the rig, but we want to go about, this is eight inches. So we want to go about eight inches from the bottom. So we're going to go right here. And we're going to go over once. We're going to go over once. And we're going to go over twice. Pull that tight. That'll cinch down on itself. Cut the little tag end here. Boom. Go up probably another three foot. Barrel swivel. Barrel swivel. Fluorocarbon. Uni knot. If you don't know how to tie a uni knot, I'll be honest with you. It's it's just about the only knot I know how to tie. Uh, it's the only knot you need to know how to tie. Whether you're going braided directly to fluoro, whether you're doing, uh, you know, fluorocarbon, just connecting, it doesn't matter. Uni knot does it all. Go over about five times. I've never lost a fish going over five times. Boom, cinch it down. Perfecto. This is what you got so far. Loop, little end there, barrel swivel. Here's how you dress it up. I get these little skirts from Jigging World up there in uh, Rochelle Park, New Jersey. I like the synthetic looking ones. This one's got a little bit of a flare of pink to it, which I kind of like. So this is what it looks like, but this is a little long, especially for if you're using a four ounce white pearl mullet, which I like to use. I'm gonna try something different today. So I'll actually give it a little bit of a haircut. Just so it's not interfering with the swimming action of your gulp bait. There you go. This is going to slide right on through. Get 
is you set up the hook. I prefer a 3 aught Gamagatsu bait holder for a 4-inch Berkeley Gulp swimming mullet or the 4-inch grub that I'm about to use. If you're going uh, with a 5-inch swimming mullet, you can certainly uh, bump it up to a 4 aught hook. But here's where you're at. At the bottom, you see a lot of guys use bucktails. I don't. Reason being is because I do a lot of fishing in uh, Barnegat Inlet. There's a lot of weeds. For those of you who fish Manasquan Inlet, you know what I'm talking about. And a lot of times that bottom bucktail can just act like a coat hanger for seaweed or seagrass or whatever junk might be in the water. So I actually just use a two ounce bank sinker, like so. Here's where you're at so far. Now, as I'm making this video telling you how to do it, I'm actually going to switch it up and try something completely new. Because while I was at Jigging World picking up some more of those skirts, I found these. They're four inch grubs, Berkeley Gold swimming mullet, and they got a little bit of a flash of pink. And I just thought with the flash of pink in the skirt, um, it would look great. So we're just going to thread this through here. You want this as straight as possible. Come out the side, come out the back. And when you want that presentation, you want it just straight. You don't want it crooked. You don't want it looking like this. This is no good. You don't want it uh, curled up in any way. You want this straight. So as this is swimming through the, through the water, right, I cut the skirt so there's no interference with the tail and the skirt will actually flash and camouflage the hook a little bit. Now look, there is a hundred different ways to fluke fish, right? My grandfather taught me different than this right here. Your dad taught you different. You do something different than I do. Here's why I use this rig and here's why I find it so effective, especially from casting from shore. Number one, the name of the game is keeping the bait an even distance above the sand line. If your bait's too high in the water column, fluke are never going to go after it. They're ambush predators. They sit, they lie and wait, they wait for something to go directly above it and they strike it. Fluke are ambush predators. So if your bait's high in the water column, it's never going to go after it. If you're dragging something along the sand, there's an opportunity there where the fish might not even see it. If it's flashy and it's about eight inches to 10 inches above the sand line and you keep that consistently, if you're going over sandbars, you increase your chances of hooking up. And the way this rig runs is as it's going with the weight at the bottom, the weight's dragging along the sand, this thing's fluttering its tail, its skirt's flashing, and it's keeping an even height above the sand, you're gonna increase your strikes. The second big reason I love this rig is it keeps the bait far enough away from the main line, your main leader line, where it doesn't interfere with a hookup, all right? So if you just do a dropper loop, chances are your swimming mullet or your Berkeley Gulf is only about this far away. This allows this to stand further away. So as it's dragging through the water, as that fluke comes up to grab it, your this line right here and this line right here aren't in the way of that hookup. Another reason I love this rig and it's so effective and it's so easy to use. I just talked about heavy seaweed, right? Barnegat Inlet, Manasquan Inlet. This junk in the water all the time. What happens with a rig like this is a lot of the times the seaweed or the junk will slide right down, miss this part which is in the back and go right to the sinker and a lot of times just fly right off the sinker. If you feel like there's some seaweed on the line, you just give a little kind of a jig like this and it falls right off. And one of the final reasons I'll tell you why I love this rig is casting distance. And I know that casting distance and fluke fishing normally aren't talked about in the same breath, right? If you're jigging from boat, you're going down, you're jigging, you're jigging. If you're, if you're on a kayak or a stand-up paddle board, you don't have to cast very far. So you see guys using three quarter ounces, so on and so forth. On the beach, surf casting, they will tell you that you can catch fluke right on the beach lip. And I can tell you through years of experience, the people who say that are 100%, absolutely, beyond a shadow of a doubt, correct. I've caught 22 inches right on the beach lip, but I've also caught keepers on the other side of the sandbar. 
and if you're gonna hit it and if you cast to the other side of the sandbar again this keeps it an even height you go up the sandbar you go down the sandbar into the trough and up the beach lift the name of the game with surf casting with fluke fish is covering ground and the cover ground it's not just horizontal you've got to cover distance as well it's great for working down the shoreline. You can work an entire beach lift for 50 yards just using this ring. All right, this is some footage from June 13th of this year. Uh, it's my first fluke outing of the year when I was talking to you about how to make the rig and how to dress the rig and why I like the rig. That was down on Island Beach State Park. This right here is at Sandy Hook in northern New Jersey. I put the striped bass stuff away and decided to go fluke fishing for the first time and I'm gonna get my first hook up. Actually, I'm gonna hook up quite a bit on this trip, right? Oh, there's the bump, second bump, set the hook, boom. It's as simple as that. Uh, I wanted to expand on uh, one of the reasons why I like the rig and talk about another reason why I like the rig. Um, and I apologize for not having more video. This is literally my first YouTube video, how to make this rig. I wish I had more of this footage to show you. And I promise you, I'm gonna have a, I, I just purchased a GoPro. I have the iPhone. I'm gonna be uh, shooting every time I go fluke fishing to show you how effective this can be. But once again, I wanna talk about the distance casting. And with that two in or two ounce bank sinker down at the bottom, I feel like I can cast this rig halfway to Portugal and if anybody's familiar with Sandy Hook uh, this is parking lot C by the jetty there's a hole and further from the hole there's a trough where all that water exits and I know there's keeper fluke there and that's what I'm going to and that's sometimes what got other guys can't reach I, I can cast this rig three times as far as I can if there's a bucktail at the bottom of it. I can cast this rig twice as far as if I'm just using a bucktail, single bucktail, and a grub at the end of it. Fluke fishing to me is about covering ground. The more ground you can cover, the more likely you are to hook up. And the further you can get out, it's not uncommon for me to cast out 75 yards, and as soon as it hits the bottom, boom, I've got a fluke at the other end of the line. I feel, I feel that bump. One of the other reasons why I like this rig is because there's constant tension on the line. Instead of using a single bucktail where you're twitching and pausing and letting it drop, or you're jigging constantly, and hey, that's, that's for some guys, and some guys, they have confidence in that, they know how to work that, they've been doing it for years, and if it's working for you, great. But I like to have constant tension on the line because I can feel every vibration. I know when that sinker is going over a muscle patch. I know when there's a piece, of, a single piece of seaweed on that line. I can feel it. I can feel every hookup. I'm fishing in front of a rainbow. I'm all impressed with myself. This is from my buddies on Facebook, by the way. Um, I can feel a piece of seaweed. I can feel that first initial bump. And I know exactly when to set the hook. The hook set is something that took me a while to get a feel for. You never set it on the first little twitch or the first little bite. You always get it on that second thump, but you can't wait too long because you don't want to gut the hook the fish. With this, I'm able to feel every single, it's like a guitar string because it's always taut. You can feel every single vibration. And I wish I had more video evidence to show you why exactly this rig is so simple to use and so effective. But that's the reason I created this YouTube channel to begin with. So I can learn from you and you can learn from me. So if you have any tips on the way that you fluke fish around the state of New Jersey or anywhere on the East Coast, please put them in the comments below. There's a lot to be learned. I've been watching saltwater fishing videos over the last four years here on YouTube and it has helped my game tremendously. So I'm going to learn from you. You're going to learn from me. And we're going to go on this journey around the state of New Jersey in different spots, fishing for different species together. So make sure you hit that subscribe button. Follow me on Instagram from the surf NJ. And until next time, tight lines, and I will see you on the surf.